What's good guys, it's your girl Keisha Ariel and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be sharing with you some tips to follow before starting your lock journey. But before we get into today's video, if you are new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button as well as that notification button so that you will never miss an upload every Sunday at 5 p.m. And also, if you would like to support my channel, then please feel free to join the ad gang by participating in watching the ads which are displayed on my channel as this really helps me out. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so before I jump into today's video, I just want to make you guys aware that I will be uploading another video in about an hour's time. So make sure that you have your notifications on so that you will not miss that video because I'm sure you do not want to miss out on this one, okay? Definitely make sure you come back to my channel to see what I have in store for you. Okay, okay, so let's just get into the video now. So after uploading my video about my box braids, um, you guys remember that one. If you don't, I'll definitely link it right here for you to go and check out. So after that video, I had someone leave a comment um, asking me the following. Um, they said to me, they go, I'm thinking about going freeform from box braids. I want to know what can I do to make the transition as pleasant as possible. And um, they was also asking about any tips, um, if I got any tips for them for um, starting their lock journey. So after receiving that comment, I decided that it would be a very good idea to share my tips with anyone else out there who would like to know what they should do or what they should you know, be thinking about before starting their lock journey. So if you are someone who is interested in starting your lock journey and would also want to know what you should do, the proper steps so that you have a healthy lock journey, then please continue to watch. So obviously when that person left that comment saying that they wanted to start their locks from box braids, whether it's free form or cultivated locks or you know semi free form or whatever, you want to make sure that you get rid of all of that builder because as you guys would have seen in my video where I shared with you when I took down my box braids, you saw all that buildup that was in my hair. So the first thing you want to do is to make sure that your hair and your scalp are clean because you don't want to start any journey, especially your lock journey, with any form of product buildup or environmental buildup in your hair because as your locks progress, guaranteed your locks will not be looking as beautiful as you would like them to look. So you want to make sure that's the very first thing you do. Make sure your hair is clean, your hair and your scalp clean. So I would not advise anyone to just take down their box braids and just leave their hair as is to start their lock journey because you're going to have that build up right there at the, um, not the root, but wherever the, the hair connected with your natural hair. So after ensuring that your hair and your scalp is clean, now it comes time to thinking more so about your actual locks and how you want them to look. So the next thing you'd like to consider is the size of your locks. So you would have to think about whether you want your locks to be thick, medium size, small, or extra small, like micro, skinny, tight, small. Now, the thickness of your locks will also then determine your parting pattern. So, um, not pattern, sorry, um, your parting sizes, your sections. Now, a good example of why this is important is because when I started my first lock journey, I had this idea that I wanted my locks to be full and, you know, look thick and, you know, probably around these, this size, right, that I currently have. But I didn't actually make my, my parting sections big enough they were quite small you know and my locks came out a little bit more on the thinner side and I didn't actually like it so you definitely want to consider how thick you want your locks because once you determine that this will then determine the parting section which will help you to achieve the look that you are after so speaking of partings the next thing you would want to consider is the parting pattern that you would like to start your locks with now there are many different patterns out there that you can research and some of them are like brick pattern which I believe is what mine is considered that I started my locks off with or is, or is it considered grid pattern and um, when I started it I was under the impression that it was called a grid pattern but 
I don't know, it could be also be um, referred to as brick pattern. But nonetheless, um, research the different patterns out there. So you have the brick pattern, you also have brick, brick or grid pattern, sorry. Um, you also got the diamond pattern, you got oval, you also got no particular pattern where you, you know you just pick your hair from pick a section from whichever part of your head and just lock it. Or if you if you just want to free form, just like the person who um you know sent me this message, you don't necessarily have to really consider um, a parting pattern because with free form locks you literally just leave your hair to do whatever it wants to do. But you also have some people who want a semi-free form, which will mean, um, you know, they kind of start it off like a little bit cultivated in a sense, but then leave their hair to just do whatever it wants to do at, after that point. And also in considering the patterns that you want, certain patterns will actually leave you a little bit limited with how you can actually style your hair. So you really want to consider what type of pattern you want and also just think about the future, like what type of styles you, you usually like or would like to, to um, go with. I mean, like with me, I pr pretty much took this particular style here because I know um, as my locks get longer, I'm going to want to like do cane rolls. I'm going to want to put it up in a certain, you know, style or half up, half down, whatever. So, you know, consider those things as well, because once you have started with a particular pattern, and you have gone like say four or five years in your lock journey and then you realize, oh wait, I can't do this particular style because I'm limited. Then you'll be like, oh, I should have changed up or I should have thought a little bit more about the particular pattern that I would like for my locks. In saying that, you also want to think about whether or not you want a center part or a side part because um, as you um, continue along your journey, you know, that could also affect the way how you style your hair. When I first started my journey, I, my very first lock journey, I started with a center part and I didn't really like it. I didn't like the center part because I found myself always wearing my hair to the side. And so when I started my second lock journey, I started with a side parting. With that, even though this is my second lock journey, you will notice that I have a center part now, and that is because I cut the front of my, I cut the locks which were at the front of my head because of the buildup that I had from, you know, taking down the box braids, and I wanted the locks in the front of my head to be much bigger, and um, you know, it worked out better for me to have a center part, and now you know the center part is kind of, you know growing on me it's not too bad <laughs> so yeah so that's another thing you would definitely want to consider is whether you want it to be a center part or a side part so another thing to consider before starting your lock journey is what particular method you would like to start your journey off with like for example i started my second lock journey off with a two strand twist method which in my humble opinion is like the easiest one to start with you know anybody can do it but hey that's just my opinion but you know, there's many different methods that you can start with. Like um, my first lock journey, I started with the instant lock method, which is basically using the crochet um, hook, yeah, not the hook, not the latch hook, but the crochet needle to actually start your locks where you form like dreadlocks immediately. But anyway, so there's many different methods you could start with. You could start either with instant lock, like I mentioned, I started my first lock journey with, or the two strand twist method, which I started mine as well as my son's lock journey with, my second one, my second lock journey. Um, you can also consider comb coils. You can consider um, braid locks. What else, what other type is out there? You also can consider sister locks. Now, like as I've mentioned, or micro locks, etc. And obviously, as I mentioned before in my last tip, was um, the, not the last one, the one before that, <laughs> But, you know, in my previous tip that I gave you, I did say that um, the, 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 the thickness that you want to go with will also determine the parting and also that can determine the method that you start with. Because if you want sister locks, clearly you are going to have smaller partings. Or if you want micro locks, you're going to be smaller partings. Now, another thing I'd like to say is um, when it comes to considering the method in which you want to start your locks off with, your hair texture can greatly impact what particular um, te uh, method, sorry, you actually start your lock journey with. Like for example, now if you have straight hair, 
right or looser curls and stuff like that like you don't have like four type hair or a more coarser texture here you would definitely in my opinion would want to steer more towards starting with the crocheting method which is the instant dreadlocks because with that particular with that particular hair texture like looser curls or straighter hair starting with a two strand twist or anything like that would prove to be a bit of a challenge because I've also had people in my comments who have said to me you know their hair texture is a little bit looser or they're starting on their children and their children hair is a little bit looser like what should they do what method should they start with and I would definitely say when it comes to that is certainly do the instant um, dreadlocks but if you're someone who want to start it yourself you're not sure what to do I would then um, suggest um, you know if you want to start with a two strand method which a lot of people have mentioned to me especially on children, I would say you could, um, like you see me do interlock the roots and also probably braid the ends, the tip of the, um, the two strand twist, or you can start with braiding method, you know, so your hair texture definitely will impact what particular method you start with. So once all of those things are established, you can then start your lock journey. Now you can either start it by yourself or you can have a friend start it or you can go to a salon to get it started. So, you know, I think those are some of the very basic main things to think about. I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that give like a ton load of information and it can seem like, oh my God, I'm bombarded with all of this and all I just want to do is start my lock journey. So I hope that this video was a little bit more simple and just kind of straight to the point in, you know, getting straight into it. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you found it very helpful. And if you did, then please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content to show your love and support. So until next week Sunday at 5 p.m., we will be right back here with another video. Don't be scared.